Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 3. It's on the atomic nucleus, um, which was discovered by this man, Ernest Rutherford. J.J. Thompson had already discovered the electron, which they knew had a negative charge. But they have viewed the atom as a plum pudding, and this is what plum pudding looks like. It's got little plums in it, and then it's got the pudding portion. So they, th they thought the atom looked like this. It was this amorphous positive charge inside the atom, and then these little negative charges were interspersed. And so what Rutherford did is he shot alpha particles at it. Um, those have a positive charge, so he assumed they would just go right through. Since there was no positive centering of that positive charge, that they would just kind of move through in a straight line. But what he found is that these positive charges went straight on through, but occasionally would come shooting right back at him, or would be bent in some form. And so um, he said it was like shooting a shell at a Kleenex, and that shell just came shooting back at him. And so what he discovered was this really dense, tightly packed, positive nucleus, uh, which we know now is made up of positive protons, but also these neutral neutrons. Now, the protons are important because the number of protons tell us what the element is. Um, in other words, if it's got six protons, we know that it's going to be carbon. If it's got one proton, then we know it's going to be hydrogen. Now, you can have something that's the same element, but varying amounts of neutrons. And so if we add up the number of protons and neutrons, and they're different in a given element, we call those isotopes of that element. And so for example, carbon-12 is going to have six protons. So is carbon-14, because they're both carbon. But carbon-12 is going to have six additional neutrons, and carbon-14 is going to have eight additional neutrons. And so we're going to have these different isotopes. And we'll find that for all of the different elements. Um, some of these are radioactive. And what that means is they're unstable, and they have a potential potential to decay or to fall apart. They give off radiation when they do that. And the rate at which they do that is known as their half-life. And so again, the atomic nucleus is made up of two subatomic particles. We call those protons, which have a positive charge, and neutrons, which have no charge. You could count the number of positive charges right here and figure out what the element is. Um, if we organize the protons in a certain fashion, we get the periodic table. And so we know that hydrogen has one proton. That's what the atomic number means. We know that iron has 26. We know that gold has 79. It tells us what the element is. But you can have atoms of the same element and varying numbers of neutrons. And when we do that, we create something called an isotope. And so if we look low on the periodic table, we find uranium-92. That means it has 92 protons. But there are going to be three naturally occurring isotopes on our planet. Uranium-238 is going to have 146 neutrons. Uranium-235 will have 143. And uranium-234 will have 142. Where did I come up with those numbers? If I take 238, which is the sum of neutrons and protons, and I subtract 92, that tells me the number of neutrons. And so on our planet, we're going to have varying amounts of that. And the average of that gives us the average atomic mass. Um, now, if we look at this graph right here, this is graphing the number of protons along the x-axis and the number of neutrons along the y-axis. And so this would be that virtual straight line if the number of protons and the number of neutrons are equal. And you'll find right here the average, which is this jaggy line right here, starts to drift towards the neutron side. What does that mean? As our atoms get larger and larger and larger, and as our atomic nucleus gets larger and larger and larger, you have to have more neutrons to maintain the stability of the atomic nucleus. And we'll talk about that in later videos. But what you create and what the colors on this graph are are different types of decay or isotopes breaking down, or they're giving off what's called radiation. So radioactive decay is when the atomic nuclei breaks down. And we could summarize that in three different types of radiation, you have an alpha particle, and that's two protons and two neutrons that are given off. You could get a beta particle, and that's either going to be an electron or a positron. And then you have this high energy, high level gamma radiation. It's electromagnetic radiation. So this would be an alpha particle given off by a, by a nucleus. And so it's become a different element. So if we talk about an example of that, uranium-238 naturally occurs on our planet, um, but it's going to undergo decay. It will lose a alpha particle. And so as it loses that, it's losing four of these nucleons, these parts inside the nucleus. And so you can see that the mass number has changed. But it's also become a new element. Since you've lost two of these protons, it's not uranium anymore, it's thorium. It could undergo a then beta decay, so we lose 
a beta particle and it becomes proactinium-234. It could lose another beta, beta particle and it could become uranium-234. And so each of these have a probability of occurring and that probability is going to be in the atom itself. And so if we take a sample of 238, we can create a curve of what it's, what's called its half-life, which is the ability for half of the atoms in that sample to decay or to break down. And so if we look at uranium-238, um, at the beginning of time, so time is graphed along the x-axis, at time zero, we're going to have 100% of that uranium-238. In one half-life, that's what this one on the x-axis stands for, we're going to have 50% of that uranium-238 decay. We're going to lose those alpha particles. Now, what's the half-life of uranium-238? It's a ridiculously large number. It's 4.5 billion years, which is about the same age of our planet. And so we would expect in that first 4.5 billion years, we're going to have half of that uranium-238 decay. In the next 4.5 billion years, we'll go from 50% to 25%, and then to 12 and a half. And it'll keep following that at a known rate because there's a known probability of each of these atoms decaying during that period of time. Now what's cool about this is scientists can find a sample of uranium-238, we could figure out how much of it has decayed, and we could find it along this line, and that would tell us how long ago um, that that uranium-238, let's say a rock for example, had actually formed. And so did you learn to describe how the internal structure of a nucleus or an atomic nucleus um, relates to the properties of that atom. Remember, the protons tell us what it is, and if we add the protons and neutrons, we get the isotopes, which can be stable or unstable and can break down over time, and I hope that was helpful.